What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski and I'm back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you guys a breakdown video on how to beat Guild Tesoro which is the brand new raid boss that was announced on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global. Now we actually did kind of suspect that this guy was going to appear on Global as we had a whole bunch of movie content including the raid boss Shiki last month which is actually pretty crazy so we did kind of suspect that Tesoro would be like really close or like just coming to global sometime soon we didn't actually suspect that he would be coming as soon as what he's actually going to be arriving at coming out on the 27th of November uh, which is actually going to be absolutely crazy so in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys the units that you can get in this dungeon as well as actually how to beat the dungeon itself so now let's get straight into the video so before we actually get into the breakdown of the unit itself, there is something that I have to talk to you guys about regarding the dungeon itself. So this dungeon will come out in 30 stamina, 40 stamina, and 60 stamina. Now, this unit is very special in the fact that he has a 100% drop rate on 40 stamina and 60 stamina. Now, you guys might be thinking, okay, I'm just going to run 40 stamina 100% of the time, but you need to run that 60 stamina at least once. Now, the reason for that is because there is a new evolution unit that you will always get on your first run of 60 stamina Tesoro. Now that random new unit, the new evolution unit, you need to evolve it with uh, Tesoro. So Tesoro actually needs this evolution unit to evolve into his 5 star form and it is a rainbow armored crab. You'll always get it on that first run uh, that you play through 60 stamina Tesoro and it is a really low chance of appearing again after that first time but make sure you are getting that evolution material so you can actually evolve your character. But, let's get straight into the character breakdown. So, Guild Tesoro, Casino King of the Grand Tesoro. He is a 5-star unit, and he is a Psy Cerebral Driven character. And at max level, at level 99, his stats are as follows. 2,256 health, 1,300 attack, and 306 recovery. So, overall, really well-balanced stats. Really good for a Psy character. He has 50 costs like all other raid bosses. And the great thing about this raid boss is he has five socket spots which is absolutely phenomenal now let's move on to his captain ability so his captain ability will boost the attack of side characters by 1.75 then it will also boost the attack of driven and cerebral characters by 1.5. So what this means is, is if the character is Psy and cerebral or Psy and driven, they will get a like 2.625 I believe, 2.6 times attack if they're Psy and either driven or cerebral. So make sure if this guy is your captain to have Psy characters of course and to make sure that not only that their attributes are that color, but make sure that their classes are either driven or cerebral in order to get the most out of him being your captain. Then, not only that, but it will boost the amount of belly received by two times. So this is actually like one of the best captains, obviously, to make sure that you're getting a, a lot of money from uh, from clearing dungeons. So if you do, for some what reason, need to run the belly cave, this guy is probably one of your best captains because he's actually got some really good damage output and because you are obviously getting two times belly received. Now, his special ability, which starts at 25 turns and will max at 14 turns, which is actually really awesome. You don't actually need that many skill ups to max him. You only need nine skill ups compared to some other raid bosses that need 15, 16. So what it does is it will deal large side damage to all enemies, and if your HP is above 50% when you activate the special, it will change all orbs on your team to yellow orbs. This is actually amazing. Really, really great for Stronghold Shanks teams, or just for any like team that likes to get yellow orbs. This is just a phenomenal ability. As long as you're above 50% HP, all of your orbs are changed to yellow, which is just, it's just such a great ability uh, for, for this guy right here. It fits really well onto pure side teams. Just an amazing orb conversion you know being above 50 percent hp is very very easy for most side teams because they get the access of so many healers you know you've got man sherry and marco those are the two of the best healers in the game and they're both psi units so if you guys want to get some really nice orb conversion you could just use one of those uh one of those specials being either man sherry or marco to just get you back to full health and then you can go ahead and activate tesoro special to get you know the maximum uh use out of his special getting a full like a full board of Psy Orbs. So this guy is a phenomenal special and I highly recommend you guys try and max him out. 
Now, similar to the Zephyr Raid boss, there is actually a secondary miniature boss that you can get 100% of the time when you run through the dungeon, which is Karina, Diva of the Grand Tesoro. So she is a four-star unit, and she does evolve from the droppable three-star character, and she is a Dex Cerebral Slasher type character. Now, at max level, at level 99, she has 1,074 health, 719 attack, and 306 recovery. Now, Karina here has a 20 cost, which is actually pretty cool. You can put her on a Sengoku team if you do wish. And she has three socket spots, which is also really, really nice as well. Now, her captain ability isn't that great. It boosts the recovery of all characters by 1.5, so not a very usable captain ability. But her special, which starts at 24 turns and will max at 12 turns, boosts recovery by 1.5 times for one turn, which is okay, and amplifies the effects of orbs by 1.5 times for one turn. So this is actually a pretty cool character. Probably won't be used that much in a Sengoku team. Like, that's probably the only team that I could probably see her being actually used in. Uh, but overall, it's still an okay special. Uh, I mean, you're going to be running the Tesoro so many times, so you might as well try and max her out at the same time, I guess. But overall, I don't see her being that useful in the future of One Piece Treasure Cruise. So now let's start breaking down each of the stages of the dungeon. Now, all of these breakdowns of stages are going to be regarding the 60 stamina version of the dungeon. When you guys are running through the 40 stamina version of the dungeon or the 30 stamina version, it's just going to be the exact same, but it's going to be a little bit weaker and a lot easier to actually beat. So uh, overall, these guys here, all of these bodyguards, I'm not 100% sure how much HP they have. I tried researching, but uh, what I found was it's going to be between 30 and 50,000 HP. So they're going to be a little bit tanky. 30 to 50,000 and when they do get to attack all of the characters aside from the yellow ones will have 4,100 200 uh, 4,128 attack and they can vary with their cooldowns but after they attack they will always go to one turn cooldown but the yellow bodyguards are actually a lot different they have a lot more attack power 7,170 and after they do get a chance to attack they will go to a two turn cooldown so if you guys have a really tanky team or you have lots of health uh, available to you and you want to take a hit then uh, you can actually just stall on those guys because they go back to a two turn cooldown so now on stage two of the Grand Tesoro, we have this room here. Now this room does have the same sort of bodyguards from the first room. Really, really annoying because they do have a 7,170 attack power. Now moving on, the Daimyo Turtles have 4 HP, so you can't really storm them at all. Uh, as soon as you hit them, they are going to die 100%, so you do have to make sure that, uh, that you're stalling correctly. And if they do get a chance to attack, the Daimyo Turtles will deal uh, close to 2,000 damage, 1,890. And uh, the Elder Turtle as well. There's an actual an Elder Turtle, which is cool. I like the way that with the 60 Stamina Dungeons, they're starting to incorporate Elder Turtles, which is actually really, really awesome, makes it more worth running. And uh, the Elder Turtle has 7 HP, so you can potentially get 2 turns of stall out of that. And when the Elder Turtle attacks, it does have 2,692 damage. Now, uh, there is also the Penguin there. I wasn't too sure how much HP the Penguin had or how much attack power the Penguin had, but uh, you can imagine that the Penguin would be very, very easy to take down. But overall, this is a pretty simple room and you shouldn't have too many issues trying to clear stage two. Moving on right now to stage three, we have Karina. Now, Karina was the Dex character, the Cerebral Slasher character that I talked about at the very start of the video. Now, Karina here has 520,000 HP and an attack power of 3,890, and she'll actually attack you every single turn on a one-turn cooldown. Now, she does have a preemptive attack that will boost your crew's attack and slot effectiveness by 1.4 times for 99 turns, which basically means that you pretty much are not going to need a type or an or booster on your team because this lasts for 99 turns. You are going to be getting a type and orb boost for the, throughout the duration of this dungeon upon stage 3. So you do have to take that into consideration. Uh, if you guys have Cavendish, you could potentially bring him because he actually removes all your positive buffs and then applies really, really cool buffs to himself. So if you actually want to remove those slot effectiveness and the cruise attack boost, then you can if you really want to. But a 1.4 times boost is actually really, really good. Now this is regarding the 60 stamina. On the 40 stamina version of this dungeon, Korea Arena will only boost your crew's attack and orb effects by 1.2 times. So there is a slight difference, but the overall boss on 40 stamina will be a lot easier than the 60 stamina version. Now, Karina is actually surrounded by quick and int bodyguard characters, and they all have th uh, 32,000 HP, so they are a lot easier to take down, and an attack power of 
2612 on a 1-2 to turn cooldown. So, overall, this is going to be a little bit of a tricky room. You know, Karina does have quite a lot of HP, 520,000. But remember, guys, you do have a slot effectiveness and a crew attack boost. So, it does mean that your crew will be doing a lot more damage, especially if they have a matching orb. You're going to be doing so much damage to Karina and the bodyguards on this room. Moving on now to stage number four. Now, on this stage, you will either encounter the Elder Seahorse or the Rainbow Armored Crab. Now, the Rainbow Armored Crab is the evolution material that you need to actually evolve your Tesoro into his five-star form. So, the first time you run the 60 stamina version, you will see the bottom image appear with the Rainbow Armored Crab. And then any other time, you know, you do have a slight chance of it appearing. But a majority of the time, you're going to be seeing the Elder Seahorse appear on stage number four. Now, the Elder Seahorse has seven HP, and if you do leave it alive, it will randomly chain a unit on your crew for six turns and the rainbow armored crab in comparison uh, i'm not too sure if it has any other special effects but it, i think it just does randomly attack you or after that third turn of stall and it has 12 hp so you know it, it will be a little bit more tankier than the elder seahorse but you know it does have a chance to drop which is really really awesome and then the surrounding into bazooka characters have 100,000 hp and will attack you for 10,500 if they do get a chance to so you do have to make sure that you are taking out those guys because 10,500 especially because you go you're about to enter the room against Tesoro in the the room afterwards so you definitely do not want to be taking 10,500 upon entering Tesoro's final room so you do have to be careful about that definitely try and focus on the seahorse first because you don't want to get your units chained and then if you guys have the attack power try and take down the bazooka characters without taking too much damage so now we've finally made it to the final stage, stage 5 of the Grand Tesoro Guild Tesoro Raid Boss. And this guy here, Tesoro, has 1.95 million HP. So he doesn't actually have that much HP for a 60 stamina boss. But you do remember, you do have that type and orb boost applied on your team. So you can potentially use that to your advantage if you have a really good orb manipulator. And he has an attack power of 6,244. And he will actually attack you every single turn on that one turn cooldown. Now, he does have a preemptive attack that will chain and despair your friend captain for four turns and swap your whole crew slots to yellow. Now, that is really, really annoying because even with max sockets, you're still getting your captain, your friend captain despaired and chained for at least one turn, at least. So you need to bring someone that can unlock characters in order to deal enough damage on that first turn because ideally, you want to try and take him out on that first turn because after turn one, he will lower your crew's attack for a single turn. Then after that expires, he will buff his own defense for one turn. And after that expires, he will apply a debuff protector for 99 turns and buff his own attack for 99 turns. So after he buffs his attack, he's going to be doing so much damage and you can't delay him after that turn three. So, for the first two turns, you actually can delay him, which is going to be very, very useful. Now, when he falls below 20% HP, he is going to be dealing 56,000 damage to you. So, obviously, you do not want to get him under 20% HP. Uh, that's just going to be, that's going to spell the end of your run for you. 56,000 is a lot of damage, so you definitely do not want to be taking that. But, uh, ideally, what you want to be doing is have a really powerful int team that can, you know, give yourself matching orbs. And then, with the orb and type boost that you get from Karina, you should be able to take down to Zoro within the first couple of turns without having to deal with too many problems. So now I'm going to provide you guys with a really easy, easy to build, free to play team that all you guys should be able to build in order to actually beat the Guild Tesoro Raid Boss. So the way that this team works is you have your Raid Boss Mihawk Captain, a friend Legend Mihawk, you have Mr. 3, uh, the Slasher Dial, you have Ayn, and you also have Golden Pound Usopp. So the way that this team works is you have obviously the Coffin Boat Ship to boost the HP and attack of Slasher characters. Now the most important character on here is Ayn because Ayn is going to be so so crucial in that in that final room on that first turn after getting your characters chained and despaired, your friend captain chained and despaired, what Ayn will do, she will actually unlock that. So that's going to be very, very important. Make sure you have Ayn on the team. Golden Pan Usopp is also very, very useful, especially on stage three against I uh, Karina, sorry. Karina is going to be very, very annoying because all of the characters around her have really, really low cooldowns. So Golden Pan is really good for that, to stall them. And then especially on stage number four as well. A stage number four could be a little bit annoying because there is a lot, a lot of people that can do lots of damage to you. Those into bazooka characters are going to be very, very tough to take down. So you got to make sure that you are taking that into consideration as well. Now, the way that you're going to be using your specials, you want to delay to Zora on that turn one, and you can go ahead and use your uh, your Mihawk, your Raid Boss Mihawk, to cut down 30% of his HP, 
Then you use your Int Crocodile special, which if you guys don't know what it does, it does lots of Int damage to the enemy. It will give himself an Int Orb and shuffle every other Orb. So if you guys have Orb Sockets and you do random shuffling, you can potentially get some really good matching Orbs, which, which is really, really nice. If you don't get really good Orbs, you can actually just exit the app, come back in and reuse the special to potentially get a better reroll on your Orbs. But, you know, with having one Int Orb on your Croc and maybe an Int Orb on either Mr. 3 or on Mihawk, you should be able to do lots and lots of damage because you do have the 1.4 times orb and type boost to your team. Then, after you do lots of damage on that first turn, remember, remember that his HP is cut by 30% on that first turn as well because of the Mihawk special. So after you do lots of damage and the 30% health cut, you go ahead and use your legend, your friend, Captain Legend Mihawk special. And after you do lots of damage on that first turn, you can go do lots and lots of damage with his special, and it should bring him close to 20% HP, and then you, can, you should be able to take him out really, really easily without him having to attack. So Golden Pound on that first turn is going to be really, really useful, uh, so that you don't get hit by his 56,000 damage attack under 20%. You have to be very, very careful about that. But overall, this team is actually really, really good, and and it doesn't actually take too long, probably to take between 5 to 10 minutes to beat him. Shouldn't take that long for a free-to-play team, actually. So this team works really, really well in order to beat the Guild at Tesoro Raid Boss. So that is going to conclude yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. And if you guys have enjoyed it, make sure to smack the like button down below. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.